Hey, what if I told you, haha, funny rap mod too? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, of course. Unless. Okay, so according to very precise Discord, Reddit, and Twitter analytics, I may have just spent my last month of free time working on the most anticipated mod of 2021. So anticipated, in fact, it got officially approved by the Had In Time development team. And this mod is about rats. Now, before we get into it, there's just one little thing I need to address first. Give me a minute there, please. Isn't this just a rats ripoff? No, you f***ing idiot. If you can't make the difference between this and this, well, first I pity you, but second, I have absolutely no ties with rats, and this is a completely different mod with a completely different vision. Okay, so now that's out of the way, if you're willing to stick with me, well, let's get into the content. Okay, so as I just mentioned, this mod is about rats. These cute little fellas will spawn in abandoned villages, natural or man-made. So for instance, if you have a village that is completely desert and abandoned by the original villagers, they will start spawning in it. All right, listen to me here. I'm not saying you should spill villager blood just for our rat overlords, but I'm saying it's an option and you're definitely good. If you think a cat in real life can actually chase a rat, it actually goes the other way most of the time. So that's something I implemented too. Rats will actually chase down cats and um, completely murder them. <laughs> look, look, look at them go. <laughs> While we are on the similarities with cats, rats don't actually take fall damage. I mean, they do, but they take fall damage starting from 15 blocks. So most of the time, they will be fine when following you around. As you can see here, uh, they are quite speedy and they tend to jump a lot from cliffs and stuff. But they're fine, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, they spawn in empty villages and they can be tamed and bred with pretty much any food. The better the food, the more chances you have to actually tame the rat. So, for instance, if we use a carrot, you will notice that uh, it doesn't work all the time. But if we use a pork chop, it will instantly work uh, basically every time. Or also, when rats are tamed and you sit them down, they flat. <laughs> At first glance, rats may seem pretty similar to wolves. However, where a wolf pack would generally give a chance to that target. If you have a big enough pack, they will absolutely shred that target. And that is for a simple reason. Even though they deal low damage, they ignore invulnerability ticks. Yes. Let me show you. I see nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, an interesting mechanic with rats is that whenever you drop an item on the ground, they will pick it up and bring it back to you. So for instance, if I go and kill this sheep, they will get the items back. And however, there are a few exceptions to that mechanic. And the first one is when rats are hurt. When rats are hurt and they pick up a food item, they will consume it and eat it in order to restore the health they lost. Naturally, since they can eat any type of food, they will also get the effects from the food. So for instance, if I drop a golden apple to this one, it eats it and actually gets the effect. And that also works with special effects food like chorus fruits, where they will eat it and <laughs> randomly teleport. And the second exception to that rule is whenever they can get their paws on a potion, they will just drink it. No matter the health, whether the potion is harmful or positive, they will drink it. So be careful what you drop there. Now, rats are pretty handy already, but they can be even more handy. You can tell them to do specific tasks. To do that, you'll need rat staffs. These will spawn in the hands of wild rats. So when they spawn in empty villages, they will sometimes get some staffs. It has a 10% chance of happening. To get the staff a wild rat is holding, it's pretty simple. You just have to tame it and it will drop it for you. Now, the first staff you can get your hands on is the harvest staff. With it, you can order your rats to harvest any mature crop they've come across, as well as replant any seeds they can get their paws on. And, uh... It is completely balanced. And, uh... <laughs> just look at this. Look at how fast they just replanted and harvested all this field. And, of course, they will bring back all the items they can get back to you. You can also use it as a tool to tell your rats to just plant anything 
uh, if you don't care about absolute chaos in your field. And it's great. The second staff you can get is the collection staff. With it, you can tell your rats to mine a block as long as it is soft enough. To do that, you just need to hold the collection staff in your main hand or your off hand and in the other hand to have the block you want to mine. So for instance, if I hold this grass block and I have my collection staff and order my rats to, well, mine this grass block, they will mine any grass block they come across. And with this staff, you can just, well, tear it form. <laughs> Look at them go! They, and, and I don't even have that many rats yet. Now I just ordered them to collect grass blocks as well as dirt blocks, but I can pretty much as well tell them to weed my garden if I hold grass in my hand. And they also make for great herbalists too. For instance, if I have a specific flower in mind I want to get, well, they will get that specific flower for me with the collection staff and will, as you see, uh, leave the other flowers just alone. So, as I mentioned, there are a few limitations. Uh, they can't mine stone or cobblestone, for instance, like I try here, they can't do that. They can't mine wood, but as long as the block is soft enough, so like generally soil, even some of the never blocks they can actually get. The third and last staff is the love staff. With it, you can order your rats to basically breed any animal as long as they have in hand the item that is required to breed this animal. So for instance, if you have cows and sheep here, they can drop this wheat, it will go after one another and will basically breed the animals for you. So that's pretty handy. And before you ask, yes, rats can breed each other. So that is one way to get absolutely overpowered with a ton of rats. Now that you have a ton of rats, you may start to think that they can be annoying or can endanger themselves if you go into dangerous situation. Maybe you want to transport them pretty easily. For that, you can get some rat pouches. Basically, there are three tiers. The level one with five rats of capacity, the twisted rat pouch with 10 rats of capacity, and the purple rat pouch with 20 of capacity. As you probably guessed, these use in their recipe leather, uh, twisting vines and popped chorus fruit and you can use them to individually add a rat to the pouch Or if you're feeling in a hurry if the pouch is empty just shift and right click and it will get All the rats it can get in a 16 radius as you can see it got quickly filled But if I try with uh, the purple rat pouch, which has a higher capacity You can see that it will get all the rats in uh, the vicinity as well as it's not even full yet and to release the rat, it's still very simple. You can't really right click as I made it, so you can't accident accidentally misclick and basically release all the rats in a dangerous area. You have to shift and right click to get all the rats out and they will all uh, get out at the same time. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that rats will not age in the pouch. So basically they will uh, retain all their effects, so for instance, you see that all my rats are in that pouch and they had potion effects. And if I release them, they will still have that potion effect. That also applies to types and names. Basically, if you put a rat in pouch, it will be exactly the same when you release it. So as you may have noticed, there are multiple types slash colors of rats. You can see there are uh, Russian blue rats, light brown rats, albino rats, gray rats, as well as husky rats, black rats, chocolate brown rats. And occasionally you may come across this rare sighting that is uh, a golden rat and these have precisely one out of 150 uh, chance to spawn and they are a little nod to Terraria golden bunnies. Now these colors may be nice but that isn't exactly all. I added a few names that basically changed your rat appearance depending on what you named them. The first one is if you name a uh, blue Russian rat, Remy, he will start to have a little chef hat. If you name a rat after Dr. Rat, he will start wearing a maid outfit with a rat mask. Rotator will change the appearance of the rat to look like a tiny potato from Botania. Naming a rat Joroto will make it look like basically Jotaro from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because I just thought this pun was hilarious. As a lot of people requested, naming a rat Germa will give it the look of the rats from the rat movie from the famous streamer Germa. And they even have, uh, as you can probably see here, they even have a special moving animation that looks similar to the one in basically the rat movie. And finally, the last name is probably the best one. I went so overboard with it. And it's probably the reason why you're on this video in the first place. And it's also the reason why the official Hat in Time Twitter retweeted one of my videos. That last name is Rat Kid. If you name a hat.
if you name a rat, Rat Kid. The pun was just too good, and A Hat in Time is an amazing game, it will get a Hat Kid costume. And the best part about it, it actually smirk dances. <laughs> so yeah, basically, you can have Rat Kids that smirk dance around your world. And there is actually one Hat in Time die or costume uh, for each Minecraft die, so I'll let you experiment with that. The current ones uh, that are in the mod are all the Hat in Time base game dies, the Shadow Puppet costume, the Nyakuza Metro Varsity, the Justice color palette corresponding to Mustache Girl, and finally a custom trans flag die, because trans rights and honestly it just looks plain cool. And in addition to all those rat kids, the mod also adds one more painting, uh, this one. It's a pixelized version of a fan art uh, at Aster of Subcon made uh, of my rat kid video, and it just looks amazing, so go show him some love. So yeah, I truly hope you enjoy this mod as much as I enjoyed making it, and if you do, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, as I spent a lot of time working on this, as well as working on this video, so it would really mean the world to me if you subscribed. And also, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video, it also means a lot to me, so thank you. While we are on the subject of thanking people, I'd like to first thank Arathane for helping me out with the rat models and textures, and overall pushing me in the first place to do this mod. Without him, this mod would never have seen the light of day. I'd also like to thank the GeckoLib dev team, and mainly Gecko and Azurodome for helping me out with this amazing library, so keep up the good work guys. And finally, I'd like to also thank everyone who supported me and the people who gave an amazing reception to this mod, so thank you so much. In the meantime, I'll leave you with all those smug dancing rat kids, and I'll see you around in the next one. Have an amazing day.